Hello, this is Wayne Rivers with the Family Business Institute. In our video blog today, I want to talk about the most common mistake that we see family business owners make. And as always, we're very interested in your comments. So scroll down to the comment section uh, at the bottom of this video and let us hear from you. I'm especially interested in hearing what questions you might have, observations, things you'd like to learn about, that kind of thing. So uh, by all means, let us know what you're thinking and feeling out there. All right, so what is this most common mistake? Well, in the early days of our companies, same thing for the Family Business Institute as your company, we had to do everything. We didn't have any money, and we had to you know, get business, execute business, manage the administration and the finance of the business. Uh, we had to go to the office supply store and buy things. We had to run to the bank. We had to run to the post office. We had to do every little thing. We had to make sure there was water in the refrigerator. Heck, we had to make sure we had a refrigerator. So we had to do everything in the context of the business, and that's just normal for any startup business. People are running around ragtag, hair on fire, trying to get everything done. We're penny pinchers, and we're penurious, and we're thrifty, and some of those lessons are terrific lessons. Some of them, maybe not so much, but in the early days, all of us are thrifty in our businesses. So I read a story this week about a local entrepreneur here in North Carolina, and he said this was brought home to him on a particular occasion. He was getting ready to go on stage in a few minutes to do a big presentation that had the potential to get his company a lot of money and uh, elevate it to a new level. Well, a few minutes before the presentation, his phone rang, and it was from the office, so he took the call, and somebody says to him, hey, uh, we're out of water. On your way back to the office, can you get water for the, for the refrigerator? And it dawned on the guy, here he was making a pitch for millions of dollars for the benefit of his company, and yet he was the errand boy who needed to stop at the store on the way back and pick up water. So that was a revelation for him. You know, we all in business have spinning plates. You've heard this analogy before. It goes back to the old Ed Sullivan show when these guys would spin plates. And it was really pretty exciting to watch. He'd get these plates going and he'd get to the end and all of them are going. And he'd look back over here and my gosh, this plate is wobbling. It's about to fall off. And he'd dash back to this end and pretty soon another one on this end. And he would be running around like a madman to keep all those plates spinning. And that's what we do in our family businesses. We're all dashing about to keep all the plates spinning. So um, what I want to say about the mistake is this. We are penny wise and pound foolish when it comes to the spinning plates. If we got some help, think about this. If there was a specialist on each stick spinning each plate and we could stand back and direct and teach and mentor these specialists, wouldn't that be a little bit better? As your business has grown, do you really need to be that thrifty about adding talent to your team? At some point, if you're the guy trying to spin all the plates, if you're the person stopping at the post office, if you're the person picking up a case of water for the people in the office, you actually become a barrier to your own success. You know, what you really need to do, and this gets back to Stephen Covey and, and all of the wisdom writers, what you really need to do is focus on what you're best at. What are the two or three or five things that you need to focus on that have the highest potential impact on your business now and for the next five years? And you need to focus on those things. When, when uh, Eisenhower or Stephen Covey or whoever actually dreamed this up uh, decided that they were going to focus on things that are urgent, important, not urgent, or not important, well, clearly there are urgent and important things you need to do. If your phone rings and your home is on fire, you're going to go there. That is urgent and important. There is no time to waste. But leaders, according to both Eisenhower and Covey and all the other wisdom writers, spend a good bit of their time in quadrant two. This is not urgent stuff. This is planning stuff. This is getting ready for the future, anticipating change, hiring the right people, training these people so that they can do the important tasks that are going to take you to the next level. There's a great story. You've probably read it before. This goes back a long time. But uh, Charles Schwab was the head of the big uh, steel company in America back in the early 1900s. And this guy, Ivy Lee, came in. Ivy Lee was the head of, he was kind of the father of public relations in America. So he has this meeting with Ivy Lee, and Schwab is complaining that both he and his executives don't get stuff done. They just don't get stuff executed the way they needed to. And Ivy Lee said the most simple thing. He said, what I want you to do is write down a list of the things you need to do each day and put the most important one at the top and focus on the most important one until you finish it. And then and only then do you move on to the next uh, item on your list. 
And Schwab thought about that for a few days, and he just out of the blue uh, sent Ivy Lee a check for $25,000, which is worth about $400,000 in today's money. As a consultant, I can tell you that's a good payday. And, uh, and he said that was the best piece of advice he and his executive team ever learned. So if you're going to take Covey's advice and Eisenhower's advice, you need to spend about 20% of your time in quadrant two planning for the future, you and your senior leaders. 20% of your time, that's, if you think about it, that's one day per five day week. You're not going to get there all at once. Maybe try to do a day a month or a day every other week at the beginning. But eventually you want to be spending about 20% of your time in quadrant two planning for the future and focusing on the things that you uniquely do well in your business. So let me have your comments. I'm interested to hear what you have to say. This is Wayne Rivers at the Family Business Institute. Thank you.